Hello everyone, my name is Austin Belzer from Austin B Media. I have uh, Danny and Timu from the film The Blind Man Who Did Not Want to See Titanic, a, a wonderful title for a wonderful film. Um, it's premiering, well it's not premiering, it's having its North American premiere at South by Southwest. It actually had its world premiere, correct me if I'm wrong, um, in Venice. Um, what was that, last yes. year? Um, Last so, year. yes. So, with that, um, I want to thank you both for joining me. I know it's been a hectic um, month. I was I was talking to the publicist, and I was like, you know, I think I got my first South by Southwest email in on like February second, and it's not even South by Southwest for another what almost two weeks or something like that, um, March eleventh. Um, so it's nuts. So uh, thank you both for coming on. Um, it's a true pleasure. Um, and speaking about Venice, you've been at uh, Venice and a whole other um, amount of festivals. So I want to ask, what did you learn from Venice and all the other festivals like Talon that you've been through? What did you, what did you learn about this film? Tim, do you go first? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I learned anything. We've, we've been with different films in quite many festivals and uh, usually the festivals are quite the same. But of course, with, with this uh, Blind Man, it has been uh, very fun to travel because everybody seems to love the film and sort of it's, it's, it, it's sort of a... Uh, in fact, usually I don't want to see my films again in, in festivals, but with Blind Man, I like to go to the audience and feel the reactions of the audience because I'm quite sure that it won't leave the audience cold. Not at all. And in Venice, mm. Venice, of course, the, the world premiere was, it was super cool. And uh, we, were, we were in Venice with the, with the lead actor, Petri Poikolainen, who is blind and in a wheelchair. So getting him to the festival and experiencing the festival with him made sort of the Venice the, the best festival of all the festivals we have been in. Yeah, I would say that like the two things, uh, two things learned. Uh, it's pretty hard to travel if you are in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, but uh, but let's say that uh, Petri is the most wonderful person uh, to travel with because he never complains. But so let's say that like uh, that was an eye opener to basically like see because we, like said that we have been traveling like hell, but uh, not with the wheelchair. So let's say that uh, let's say that when you actually understood that how hard that was, that was a. Uh, one thing that we have learned. Another thing that uh, how I have been seeing the festival that it's really cool when you get in. And then I have been thinking that, you know, oh, this is wonderful. But now I know it's really cool to win something. <laughs> 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 and, and also like when it comes to Venice, I mean, like, um, I certainly hope, uh, this is the first time that we are coming to South by Southwest. So we do not have any idea how it's going to be, but I mean, uh, especially after the COVID, so that you really haven't been so much uh, in cinemas, like experiencing the premiere in Venice with, what was it, 800 people? Something like that. Yeah, that was a, that was a blast. I mean, like, uh, I've never ever have experienced something like that. I mean, I want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's funny. This is my first South by Southwest, and you, you know how I, it, it was interesting going to see, it's a totally unrelated uh, experience, but um, going to see the new Spider-Man movie and having the pack theater, it was just mm. a lot different than when I'd gone during COVID and there was maybe, I don't know, 14 people max. There, it's just a wholly different experience. Um, 
I'll be interested to see the reactions out of South by Southwest. Um, one, I think, is um, Shane, one of my friends, also saw this film. Uh, and I was like, oh, you saw it too? Oh, we could talk about it, um, which is fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm super glad that we're kind of getting back into it in person. Even, I, And I think this is being offered virtually as well, but... Um, I'll be interested to see what the kind of crowd reactions are. I wish I could be there, um, but just logistically I couldn't make it happen um, in the time frame given. Um, but um, so I, I think, what who would you like the most to see your film? Who is not target audience because that's kind of a buzzword. Um, that people like to use, but I think if one group of people had to see this film that you really wanted to see this film, who would it be? Human. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do agree. It, it's a big group, but it's it's a group. <laughs> also, also, I'd. I think that, that this is actually a film that, like, if there's a, uh, a blind human who has a friend who's not blind, so this is a film that the blind person should take his uh, friend that can see to see. <laughs> I don't yeah. know whether that was English or not, but, like, uh, I think you get the idea. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's just, like, I, I, I don't know, and maybe they'll... Um, transition me into my next question, but um, I think we're starting to see a, a lot more, um, I don't know what the word would, would be for it, it would be um, more, more representation of disabled people, the sound of metal, um, won a bunch of things, it's one of my favorite films of that year, whichever year that came out, I the past three years have been a blur. Um, and I, we've got Coda this year. Um, that's I think nominated for Best Picture. Um, so we're starting to see a lot more progress when it comes to our representation of um, people with dis disabilities in film. So, what would you what what is your hope for future representation in films uh, for disabled people or people with disabilities? Of, of course, in, in our case, because the also the we are not only telling a story about a disabled man, we are also working with a disabled man yeah. who is an actor, but in a wheelchair and blind. So of course, I, I don't. I, I think that uh, that is something that makes our film very special because the person is is acting every everything else <coughs> except the disabilities mm. and it, it makes the films quite rare in that way but what we would hope of course we would hope that uh, there are different kind of films telling different kind of stories with different kind of uh, characters and and s somebody like petri i hope that actors who get injured could still work because actor is an actor if even if he's a blind or in a wheelchair or whatever yeah Yanni. <laughs> yeah well uh i actually do not have anything to add but what i hope that like uh, i mean we've been working with them together like for more than a decade and uh and uh, let's say that uh, what I do hope that when it comes to whatever character like you have in the film, that the filmmakers would basically uh, work in a way that you would be in the same level with the character of which story you are telling and not like looking the character, you know, from my artistic ivory tower. And that's actually something that like uh, Temu as a director has always uh, done. I mean, that you basically... Uh, you basically it get into the same level and try to find the same 
view to the world as the character that you are telling. And I think that that actually makes this film very special because it's a perfect example of what happens when you actually actually manage to do that. It's not the most easiest thing to do. You know, tell a blind, blind person's story from uh, in a cinematic way. It's like, uh, first you think that it's like, really, that are you guys crazy? <laughs> But I mean, I think that it turned out to be really good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very interesting because you are saying, here's how we want to um, visually represent this thing. And it's like, well, but this person, it, it, it's hard to kind of display that visually sometimes, I think, because, and I think you really do have to lean on the person with um, the story you're trying to represent. Say, okay, how do you experience life? I mean, I think with Sound of Metal, to use an example, I keep leaning on examples, but mm. that's just what helps me. Um, I think, um, oh, I forget who the supporting actor was. Um, Paul something. Um, he was actually deaf and working with um, a deaf community. A lot of his stories adapted into that uh, film. And they just went and asked him, okay, here, how do we, how do you experience the, uh, your, your everyday life? Tell us about it and we'll put it in the film. And that the same thing would happen with, mm. I believe, Coda. That, um, yeah. it's, it's a great film, by the way. Yeah. I really, really liked it. It's also like one of my favorites from the year, which I don't remember what was it. <laughs> Thanks, COVID. <laughs> but actually, I think, I think, uh, I think we actually shot this film. We filmed this film like before we saw that. Before we saw Sound of Metal. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Because, yeah. yeah, Sound of Metal wasn't out yet. Yeah, I think it was like, yeah, because I now when I'm yeah. thinking about the years, that how the hell did it go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw Sun of Metal at AFI Fest 2020, so that was October 2020. Yeah. And then I saw Coda at Sundance 2021. Yes. Yeah. January. Coda, Coda, I haven't seen. I haven't seen that. Uh, if you, I, I don't know um, where it's streaming where you are, but definitely go see it if, if you can. I think they put it back at theaters and it's on Apple TV Plus and whatnot. But we're not here yeah. to talk about other films. That's we're true. Here to, we're here to talk <laughs> about it. That, that would be actually more interesting for us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, we can, we can talk. You know, just, hey, well, uh, hey, do you have a blockbuster in your area? <laughs> yeah. uh, but... Um, but no, um, circling back to the film, I, I think, as I said before, it's a, a very unique um, title. Where, where, where did that title come from? Because I see that title and no matter what, it instantly grabs me. Like I was talking with Steph about uh, Cha Cha Real Smooth, which I just um, was in the middle of watching. Um, and... I, I just want to know where where did that title come from? Well, it wasn't in the beginning because it was well, our working title was called the Touch, which horrifying. Very, very horrifying <laughs> you could put a horror poster with that. You could like have a hand <laughs> like with blood yeah, dripping. Yeah. But uh, do you only remember it was in some festivals? Was it you yeah. or was it me or was it somebody else? I don't remember. It's like uh, th this is the pr this is the you know problem when you work quite a lot together. You never remember who actually <laughs> invents and what. But, but like basically, like what 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 in the end that I remember that like uh, we had to we had to came came we had to come up we had to come up with the good title for some kind of a work in progress market. And then we were like really like thinking thinking quite a lot that what the hell it should be because you know you make a film's name like the touch and then like everybody remembers the first title that you have had in a in a 
in a work in progress. It's pr it was probably like the Hogesund or something like that, because like uh, we won a Yuri Mars post production prize in Hogesund, so it might it might be that it it was for that, or then it was something else. But anyways, like uh, why we actually then uh, stick with it because like uh, when we uh, it was pretty long discussion because we were thinking, of, God, this is a long title. <laughs> But actually, it's more or less it's more or less a title and a log line in the same package. Yeah. So, so in a way, in in that way, it's it's actually pretty. In in a way, that, in a way, it's pretty perfect because it really sticks into your head once you have time to read it. <laughs> yeah. The name tells the story. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> yeah, and go ahead. Um, but I actually ran into something where I'd seen a film at Sundance. It was under a different title, but now it's called The Cursed. It just came out. I think mm. it was called Eight for Silver. And I thought that was such a cool name because it told you everything you needed to know. And then it comes out this last month um, when Uncharted came out and it's got The Cursed. And I'm like, that is such a bad title. And like the <laughs> poster's just like a like a vampire silver bite now i'm like okay so you've got silver in the poster but you drop the name for some reason it, it's it's weird so i i think the title works a lot better because you're like why didn't the blind man want to see titanic did he just like <laughs> was he upset with james cameron or something like did he just not like his movies or something no but um is it an epoch film so that it's actually the boat yeah like <laughs> you you could almost create your own narrative about the title and i kind of love that because no matter um, how long the title is i forget there's been some long titles in the past year like i know summer of soul is just called summer of soul um but if you read nominations it's also called it's got like a little uh subtitle like mm. i think it's called summer of soul or when the revolution could not be televised. Um, and there's a few other ones, but I won't bore you with the, the mm -hmm. details. Um, but I, I kind of love when you get these long titles that also describe the film because I think it, I know I made a joke about Blockbuster, but mm -hmm. back when I was growing up, I'd look at the little cover of a Blockbuster thing and be like, okay. You, because you'd just see the title, you wouldn't see any artwork, especially if it was like a used disc or something like that. It would just be the Blockbuster logo and the title and a short description on the back. And that's all you had to really go on. And I think just in an age where we're just clicking uh, little boxes that, with a little poster on it, um, I think your that title really does a lot of justice to the film. The, grabs people in who maybe um, are just looking at the South by Southwest schedule and are just like, oh, hey, what is this? And instantly, no matter what it's about, they're instantly in, um, in into it. Um, but um, you, you say you, you two have worked together for, what, 10 years? Mm, I think it's yeah. more than 10 years. More than 10 years, yeah. More than 10 years. So, yeah, yeah I think it's close to 20 years soon. That's actually true. God damn, we are old. Let's shut this Zoom down. Yeah. We are, <laughs> he uh, knows our age. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think we started to work like 20 years ago together. And like 10 years ago, we started to work even more together. Mm. So we made commercials back in the days. And then we started to make movies ten years ago. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, we started we started from short films. So basically, uh, Temu asked me that would you like to write short films with me? That we that uh, I have this agenda that we have to make like one short film per year, and then there was rules how to make it. One of the rules was you have to have a script, <laughs> and another rule was like only one day of filming. <laughs> but there was five of five of these and then like uh, uh, about three months after the conversation we shot the first short film like this was 
2006 or seven, something Six or like seven. that. Yeah. And the budget was huge. It was like 1,000 euros. And that actually makes me think of a question. I, it's going to be cliche. You're probably going to hear it um, a lot since um, the Oscars decision uh, has decided not to present all 23 uh, categories. Um, I think one of those is short, that they're not going to broadcast short on the live program. Mm. Um, so what do you, I, I got to ask, what, what do you guys think of that, that, that they're getting rid of those 12 categories? Well, I love short films. I mean, they should be broadcasted <laughs> like... Uh... <laughs> well, who, who cares about Oscars? <laughs> I mean, personally, and this is a little biased because um, I'm a voter, but um, mm. uh, I care more about the Spirit Awards, if I'm going to be mm. honest. Um, yeah. That's where a lot of my favorite films come from. Um, like, I, um, so... Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I think really, I think we're getting to a point where it's got to change um, mm. because yeah. I talk with a lot of short film directors and a lot of, I mean, just last year at the Oscars, even I, I talked to uh, Mikkel, um from Sound of Metal, and mm. that would not have been something I would have been able to do uh, otherwise. Um, so hold on one second. Yeah. One second. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, no problem. Just checking levels and all that stuff um, because I'm hearing stuff in my, my in my headset, which is always fun. Um, but yeah, I I just think I I just think people should go see this film. Um, it's online. It's physical. It's you can see it whichever way you want. Uh, at South by Southwest this year. And I think people should. Because um, this is a film, I think... I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just think people should see it. I, I think it's as simple as that. Um, I think, you know, it's... I do agree. <laughs> <laughs> no bias at all there. Um, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I, I, I think there's a tendency with festivals, as we go back to in-person that um, maybe mm. attendees tend to ignore some, uh, some films um, because you can't see as many if you're going from place to place to place and you've really got to make decisions. Mm. And I think on that list, amongst the caboodles of hundreds of films here, I think people should make an effort to go and see this at the very least. Um, even if you have to like, log into the South by Southwest on your phone as you're waiting in line. See it that way. Whatever you got to do. Um, but um, thank you <laughs> both. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm like, I was just about to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, thank you both for um, coming on on a Friday. It's, it's, the weekend, it's gonna be great. Um, I hope, I hope great things for this film. I hope everyone covers this film. Uh, I'll make sure to pr uh, email my press friends, make sure they know about it. Um, yeah, so I, I, I really wish the best of luck for everyone involved in this film, uh, with here or not. So, thank you so so much again for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your assistant is coming. <laughs>